So what we have here are just some unit tests I've created to show the different conditional compilation options you have. So this one here's an if def, if def windows. You can actually do if not def as well. Um, and now this will fail because it says it's not windows because I tested against windows, but we want it to pass. So um, the else statement is optional here. You don't have to include an elf, but you do have to end every if def with an end if. Okay, so that's if def syntax. You can also do the if syntax. This is a newer feature, was added, I don't remember when this was added, but uh, added a while ago, that lets you use if. And you can say if defined MS Windows. So instead of if def Windows, MS Windows, you say if defined MS Windows. But the cool thing is you can do and in here, and you can uh, check the value of constants. And so you can say compiler version equals 30, which is the version for Seattle. So if both those are true, then we're on Seattle for Windows. Again, you can have an else, that's optional. And then an if can be in, is ended with an if end. Now, if can also be ended with an end if. All right, there's a comp compiler directive in there if you want to say, I only want to end it with an if end, I'd never want to be ended with an end if. And that allows for nesting and different creative things. Generally, it's not a big deal, but you can end it either way. And again, the else is optional on both of these. So here we see an if statement where it's checking compiler version, RTL version, and FireMonkey version. Uh, one note is FireMonkey version is defined in FMX types. So you have to make sure you use FMX types. And this is what's the version of these for 10 Seattle. If you wanted to uh, check to see if it was 10 Seattle or newer, then you can say uh, greater than equal to on any of these. And this would check to see if it was 10 Seattle or newer. So if it's a lot more flexible than the if def, uh, it really depends on what you're testing for. If you're just testing for one of these compiler directives like platform, CPU architecture, et cetera, then you want to probably use just if def. But you can, like I said, use defined there as well. Now these tests here show how to use platform services. Uh, platform services is defined in FMX platform. And each of these different services are defined in a different unit as well. In this case, the uh, clipboard service is defined in FMX platform. If you uh, want a full list of it, check out the short URL, which I'll show you in the learning resources that has the full list and what units they're defined in. So we have two different ways you can do this. Here's the, I'm calling this the long way. Uh, here you can just check. So you just check to see if it is by calling platform services. You want the current platform, supports platform service, and you want to pass in the name of the uh, service you want to check for, the interface for it. And that will return either true or false. If it's true, then this code will only execute when the service is supported. Now, the difference between platform services and compiler directives is this code will always be compiled in. Okay, so you don't want to use platform services to try and keep prevent code from being compiled like a conditional compilation would. Instead, this is only code that's going to execute when, in this case, the clipboard service is available. Now, I call this the long way because now we can get an instance of the clipboard service by calling platform services current get platform service in the name of the service we want, and then we cast it. Now we have a clipboard service. We can set the clipboard and get the clipboard value from here, and then we just test to make sure that it actually worked correctly. Uh, if we didn't have clipboard service, then it would raise us an error here. So this is the short way here. And this time, all we do is say uh, supports clipboard or supports platform services, and then we pass in the um, variable we want to have the instance to. And so this just uh, basically has the call to get platform services here and returns it as that one there. And so now we can just access the clipboard to set the value and then to get the value from it. That's it. That's all there is for platform services. Uh, you can check out the documentation if you want to look at how to add your own platform service, remove existing platform services, etc. But this is the most common scenario you're going to use is look at the platform services to see if a certain feature is supported and then access that service in order to interact with it. So we're going to look at a couple examples here, one in the RTL and one in the FireMonkey framework. And you'll see this pattern continues throughout all of the FireMonkey framework in RTL. So this is system.notification. So if you wanted to include notifications, you would use system.notification. Now, if we jump down to the implementation uses clause, you'll see right here we have if defs here. So if def iOS, use system.ios.notification. These are the only if defs in here. 
That's it. No other if defs. Okay, so there's not if defs sprinkled throughout the file, making the file more complicated. They're only here in the users clause. Now, the system.notification implements the base classes, interfaces, common behavior, etc. So if we look at system.mac.notifications, in here we see that it implements the T platform notification center dot, which is based on the T base notification center. If we jump back into our system.notification and look for platform notification center, we'll see right here in the internal get instance is when it gets an instance of that. Okay. So this is how the system.notification implements the platform specific implementation. Now we looked at the Mac version and the Android version. We're seeing exactly the same pattern here. So now let's look at, look at FireMonkey's T web browser. Again, we have a fmx.web browser. If we jump down to the implementation users clause, we'll see some if defs in here. Now this is using both if def and if defined. And again, this is the only conditional compilation in here is in this users clause. And here, if it's Android, we're gonna use a web browser.android or web browser.coco. So if it's iOS or Mac OS 10, it uses web browser.coco. So we can take a look at those implementations here. And what they do on this, pattern is it registers a platform service. So register web browser service adds a platform service. And that's once that service is added by web browser.android, then fmx.web browser is able to implement that service, what that service implements, or it's able to use that service, I guess. We'll take a look at Coco, the exact same thing here. Register web browser service. So some of the advantages of this is if you have somebody on your team that knows Coco really well, they implement the web browser.coco and someone that knows Android really well implements the web browser.android. It keeps that separate. When something changes on Android, you only change the .android implementation. So it has a nice separation. Again, very few conditional compilations, only right here in the users clause are the only place we see them.